Every professional wrestling match needs at least two types of gear changes. And if you don't know what they are, you better stay tuned because that's what we're talking about today until we make it. I'm Mike Quackenbush, this is Till We Make It. And the last video that I was making made me think of this. We need to talk about the two types of gear changes that every professional wrestling match needs to contain. And whether you're structuring your match in two, three, or five acts, or you're using a different narrative backbone on which you're gonna hang all the moves and spots that you've created, there's also the performative side of the structure. There's the mechanical side, that is deciding to counter a German suplex by reversing the waist lock and taking your opponents to the rope for an O'Connor roll. That's a mechanical choice. That's not what we're going to talk about today. What I do want to talk about are the performative elements. So of those two types of gear changes, the one that is most easily understood is tempo. You need a tempo gear change at least once a match. And I think you may be able to get away with it multiple times throughout the match, especially if you're doing a full three-act structure. If you have a short form match, and I might think of those as being five minutes or less in terms of their runtime, one tempo change might be all that you need. But what about if you're out there asked to do 18, 20, or 30 minutes? You're going to need multiple tempo changes to create that roller coaster like effect that makes sure the ride you've designed keeps the audience engaged. My personal method of looking at this is to consider the first act as it is nearing that important turning point, the cutoff. And that's when I want to drive my car as fast as it will go, so to speak. I want the tempo to rev up as we're getting toward the end of the first act, because I want the audience to realize if I, the babyface character, am able to run this match the way I want it to go, you can expect it to be like this. It's fast, it's exciting, and it's flashy. And then all of that comes to a screeching halt and a radical downshift in tempo when the cutoff, the turning point that connects Acts 1 and 2, finally appears. That feeling of rapid deceleration indicates to the audience an act change. And oftentimes, an act change also needs to include something which is irrevocable. It cannot be taken back. For example, I have my shoulder rammed into the corner ring post. For the rest of the match, that is going to be part of our story. It's irrevocable. My shoulder will not magically repair itself three minutes from now and then disappear from the plot of the match. Some of the books that have taught me the most about storytelling and the writing of those stories tend to structure whatever that is, a movie, a television show, etc., in this way. That the first act makes up the first 25% of whatever is being created. And the third act is the final 25%. Meaning, with those removed from the equation, half the running time is dedicated to act two, what we would call the heat or the rising tension. And if that is the way that you happen to structure your matches, then you know that is the meatiest part of the entire performance. It has more runtime than either as Act 1 or 3 do. So if experimenting with the tempo gear change is going to be something new to you, the place where it will be most valuable is in that meatiest of sections, the part of the match with the longest runtime. And that, at least under classical form, will tend to be Act 2, the heat. That's where you're going to need those tempo changes. And you might be able to dial it up a little bit when you're showing a hope spot, and you might need to dial it way down as you're getting toward the end of Act 2 to convey to the audience a sense of desperation and that hope is fading for the hero's comeback. A quick aside here, especially if approaching structure in this way seems new to you, like how does movie, television, or screenwriting structure directly relate to what we make as professional wrestlers? Well. Pause for a moment, perhaps, to enjoy the movie Pacific Rim. It's by Guillermo del Toro back in 2013, and structurally, you will find that it mirrors exactly what we do in professional wrestling beat for beat, even if the way in which your coach or mentor taught you structure is not called three-act structure. I know people that have referred to it as the staircase of seven steps. I know some people that refer to it as building a house and where the roof comes together is the climax, it's the point of the highest dramatic tension. Or I know others who use a roller coaster analogy to describe the way in which a match should flow. 
but all of these ideas come back down to the same core elements. It is about three stages combined with two turning points or plot points in the story, the cutoff and the turnaround, no matter how they're defined or what vocabulary is used to express them. And this is perfectly encapsulated in a movie called Pacific Rim. So as you happen to be watching and enjoying the great monster and robot fights in Pacific Rim, and yes, you'll absolutely see that tempo gear change just like I was describing a few moments ago, there's a second kind of gear change that not only will you find in Pacific Rim, but that you've got to bake into every pro wrestling match you ever have. And that is an emotional or mood change, which most commonly happens when you get to the end of the second act. This might mean in some examples that a character that has been frustrated suddenly becomes enraged. It might mean that a character that for a while was dominant and arrogant is suddenly reduced to a sniveling coward. But there needs to be an emotional gear change or otherwise a shift in the mood of the performance to avoid it feeling monotonous. When the emotion or the mood remains consistent throughout the entire performance, it feels as if the characters aren't changing, growing, or evolving in any way, shape, or form. And this monotone of emotion allows audiences to disengage. You might be very talented when it comes to the mechanics of wrestling, the moves, the counters, the escapes, the physical motions of it. And then usually after mastering a certain amount of mechanics, we start to develop our structural skills, the way in which we assemble the performance. But often I find the piece we get to last is the performative elements. And that's what we're talking about with these two gear changes, tempo and mood. Putting those performative elements into play is the mark of a real polished professional. And you may have to make a mental note for yourself when the structuring is all done to do another pass through the entire performance and make sure those performative elements are present because every professional wrestling match needs those two gear changes. If you're already familiar with these two gear changes, I'm curious to know, which one are you best at? Leave me a note down below in the comments. And if this is something new you're gonna be trying out at your very next booking, which one do you think you're going to try first? I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below, and don't be afraid to leave your anecdotes or notes down there for me to discover, because I'm always going through the comments section and looking for ideas of what we could make next here until we make it.